Good morning. Welcome to Unity of the Valley Spiritual Center. We are part of Unity Worldwide Ministries, and you can find us locally at 350 North Orchard Avenue here in Vacaville, California. Let us begin today's service with prayer. Dear God, thank you for this glorious day. I start the day with such joy knowing that God is love is peace is in these challenging and uncertain times i know that as a spiritual being i need only turn within to listen to be present and to be still in this blissful stillness i draw from a reservoir of infinite wisdom divinely guided protected and blessed i know what is mine to do and I do it with confidence and clarity. Thank you, God, for your amazing healing power that is at work in me, in my family, in my friends, and in all of my brothers and sisters around the world. Thank you, God, for watching over our medical professionals, medical researchers, and essential workers. Thank you for surrounding them with your power peace and protection and thank you for opening my heart to love and i am blessed with peace joy and harmony and so it is amen so thank you for taking this time this morning to join us here at unity of the valley spiritual center online if you are viewing for the first time or if you are part of our community, it's always a good thing to remember what unity is all about. And we can see that in our perfect mission statement, which reads, transforming lives, inspiring growth, creating loving community, and shining the light of God in all. What a great mission statement. And this is even true for our YOU who are meeting right now in a Zoom meeting. If you are a YOU student and would like to be part of the Zoom meeting, please email our center at unityvv at pacbell.net and get the details to join the Zoom meeting with your friends. We may be physically distant, but we are so spiritually close. 
close enough that I can see right into your rooms where you're viewing this service and I can tell that yes, you are a beautiful child of God, perfect in every way. You are loved unconditionally just the way you are. Let's take that in together. I am a beautiful child of God, perfect in every way. I am loved unconditionally just the way I am. Now, during the week, if you forget this, we have some very special people called our prayer chaplains that will help you remember that you are loved unconditionally just the way you are. Our prayer chaplains are available to pray with you if you are going through challenging circumstances during these difficult times. If you know of someone else who is in need of prayer, they are here for you. If you would like to share anything, a joyous celebration, simply contact our center at unityvv at packbell.net and a prayer chaplain will be in contact with you. Prayer chaplains, you do bless us with your presence. Thank you. It is time for our morning announcements, so let's begin. First of all, we are having a fun fundraiser. On April 30th, you don't have to fix dinner. Hooray! You can go to Tahoe Joe's and take out for the low, low price of $20. You get to choose from steak, chicken breast, ribs, with all the fixings that go with it. Treat yourself, why don't you? And you'll be treating our center with your generous financial support. Another way to support our center, again, is by going to unityvacaville.org and clicking on that orange donate button. Our center is so appreciative of your tithes, gifts, and love offerings. Thank you. Let's talk about how we can stay connected here at Unity of the Valley Spiritual Center. One way is through email. Now, if you're already getting email from Unity of the Valley, you can uh, run to the kitchen and get yourself a snack, but hurry back because there's more good things to come. But if you are not on our email list, you simply go to unityvacaville.org, scroll to the very bottom of the page, and there you will see, where you see the arrow pointing, join our list. Simply click on that, and you will get all the wonderful announcements from our center. You will also get this friendly reminder every Sunday morning of a very easy link to click on to view the service. Now, I know some of you, every Sunday, it's a kind of a struggle to get our service up and running, either on your devices or your TV, but here's a very quick link. You simply click on the link, it takes you to the page, and you're getting to see us live and in action. So that will come to you every Sunday morning around 9 o'clock to give you plenty of time to join us for our 10 o'clock service online. Another way that we can stay connected is through our community bulletin board. Once again, unityvacaville.org, scroll on down, click on that where it says uh, read more and uh, add your comments. We're going to be respectful and loving and responsible, keeping unity principles in mind. And let's have a chat, why don't we? Thanks. Now, we know that you are doing such a wonderful job at sheltering in, but sometimes we have to go out for the essential groceries or uh, whatever else essential things that we need. And the CDC is asking us all to wear masks. Well, you can get your very own mask made lovingly by people at our center. These are free, um, no love offering required, but if you would like to donate something, 
much appreciated. And the mask looks like this. And I won't take time to model it, but if you need one, contact the center at unityvv at packbell.net. As we go out and about during these challenging times, with our masks on, with our gloves on, it's also important that we don't forget this at home. And that's our statement of faith. Very, very essential, isn't it? Let's say it together. There is only one presence and one power in my life. God the good. Amen. I am a bubble, make me the sea, make me the sea, oh, make me the sea, make me the sea. What a great hymn that is. I love, I really love the words of that song. It reminds me that I am always, always one with the God of my being, with the God of my understanding. Sometimes, especially in times like this when the coronavirus crisis is happening in the outer world, it's very easy to feel like I'm a wave just being tossed around. I would imagine I'm not alone with that, but that memory, that knowing that I am not just a wave being tossed around, I am a wave that dissolves into the sea, into the ocean, and that ocean is a symbol for the allness of God. And when I know that oneness with God, when I know that to be the truth of my being, then somehow riding out whatever might be happening in my world, it becomes so much easier.
so much easier. There was a poster at one point that said that you really can't stop the waves that come at you, but you can learn how to surf. And that moving with the knowing of the God that is present always is my way of spiritually surfing, my way of knowing that I am not bounced around as a wave, but that I am part of something so much greater. So today we are talking about advice, advice from the heavens. You know, we spent many weeks looking at the prayer of St. Francis and the ways that we can be a channel of peace, an instrument of peace in our world, regardless of what might be going on around us. And then last week we celebrated the resurrection, the resurrection of the Christ, the Christ Jesus, and the Christ that lives within us. So here we are, we are filled with spiritual tools, but I thought it might be useful to look at what the masters teach us, what the masters who are in the heavens teach us about living, sheltering in place, sometimes in isolation, mostly with restricted movement. And there is some good advice, absolutely good advice to be had. So here we go. There is an astronaut named Scott Kelly. He was um, on many missions throughout his career. His total time in space was 520 days. And at one time, he spent 340 continuous days in space. That's almost a year, shy of two weeks. I guess he got two weeks vacation at the end. So, uh, and this month, not this month, last month in March, he published an, an op-ed in the New York Times titled, I Spent a Year in Space, and I Have Tips on, uh, tips on Isolation to Share. So I just pulled from that article to see what he had to tell us, what advice he had to give us. And first of all, he said to have a regular routine. In other words, sleep at a certain time, wake up at a certain time, take showers at least once a week. No, once a day, I meant to say. So have a routine that is predictable and that somehow, somehow doing that, when we have a structure, when we follow a plan, it allows our energy to flow in a way that's organized and contained. I don't know if you've ever had the experience or the feeling of energy just scattering. I know I've said that. I feel scattered. And what I mean by that is the energy, my life energy is not focused. It just seems to dissipate and I can't quite grab it back. I start heading in one direction and next thing I know I'm over here. When we are at home for long, long periods of time, day after day, and we do not have a structure, a plan, some sort of regular routine, it's easy. It's easy to, to have our energy just sort of slip away. But that plan, that intention, we talk about intention in unity, that regularity allows us to focus that energy and to actually live more fully within that routine. And he talked about scheduling work hours. Living and working at home, if I'm not careful, and I know this from talking to other people, if we're not careful, we can work 24 hours a day. Someone I know told me that she wakes up in the middle of the night and continues with the last work task that she left off of, and then wakes up later and begins the morning task before it's morning 
And so even in sleep, during breakfast, during lunch, during dinner, while we're talking to a family member, we continue to work. And that also has a way of draining our energy. When we schedule a clear start and a clear stop, we can focus our intentions, our energy, be creative, be productive, and then stop and rest and create a balance in our lives. And then once we stop working, we have two choices. We can sit and twiddle our thumbs for several hours, or we can cultivate activities, hobbies, reading, writing, creating art, um, tinkering with things, if that's what you like to do. But activities that bring joy and are relaxing and leave you feeling like, boy, I'm glad I did that. And then the last thing that Scott Kelly recommended is to have regular, he called them video visits, with friends and family. And of course, for most of us, that Zoom, or I, I work with a program called Collaborate or Skype, FaceTime, whatever means you have to digitally or, um, yeah, digitally connect with video. So that's one set of ideas or advice from the heavens. There's another person, another astronaut named Jessica Mayer, and she spent about seven months at the International Space Station. And in fact, she just came back down to Earth along with two other astronauts last Friday on April 17th. But the day before she came back, she interviewed with Stephen Colbert on The Late Show, or he's calling it A Late Show right now. And that's a picture of her in the bottom corner in the space station as she was talking to Stephen Colbert. And I listened to her video and I pulled uh, from the video that, where she spoke with Stephen Colbert, the advice that she had to give. And she, she began with get daily exercise, and she talked about the importance of keeping our bodies in tune, toned, if you will. Because when we do that, it also allows us to build our energy. When we keep our bodies toned, it's much easier to feel our life energy and to channel it. And then she went on to say, maintain a regular routine. And so here she overlapped with Scott Kelly, and she talked about the importance of scheduling chunks of time to do specific things and to make it regular so it becomes a pattern we can rely on. I believe we have a way of getting lost in ourselves when we don't do this, when we just allow our energy to dissipate. And I'm not talking about the, the going inward and going deep within the way we do with meditation. I'm just talking about losing our sense of who we are for moments at a time. So maintaining a regular routine. The next thing that she said uh, on the show was play nice with others. I really like that. It's important when we are sheltering in, when we are in this prolonged um, womb, if you will, that we play nice with the people that we do come in contact with, whether by phone or video contact or family members. And she also said that playing nice with others means taking care of each other. We really cannot do this way of living, this way of being alone. 
I mean, even if we're physically alone, our thoughts, our consciousness needs to include other people. We need to offer our compassion. We need to offer our gratitude. We need to offer our understanding or our support, even if it's only in consciousness and through the energy we put out. But sometimes we can actually offer real help. Sometimes we can donate to other organizations that are providing physical help. Sometimes we can write letters. Sometimes we can actually go out and volunteer if there is a safe way of doing that. If there is a way in which we can reach out and we can support, help, understand, sometimes listening to someone, calling someone up and just listening is a way of taking care of others. And when we do that, our hearts open. And when our hearts are open, then that physical exercise that we're getting the regular sleep, the predictable work schedule becomes a deeper experience because whatever we do with open hearts, we do more fully, we live more fully. So her third recommendation, her third piece of advice was play nice with others. And then the fourth thing that she said on the show was maintain a sense of humor. Without that, this could be a very, very serious and heavy time because it is in so many ways. But if we can find the humor, the joy in moments, if we can see the light shining through a difficult situation, if we can smile or make someone else smile or laugh, that's a gift that we can give. Now, it's not on this list because it wasn't in this particular interview, but later I watched a different video where Jessica Mayer was talking, and she added a piece of advice, and what she said is, suit up every day. S-U-I-T, suit up every day. And on their bingo, that's it. Because if we live our lives in dirty pajamas, day after day after day, it doesn't matter how well we do these other things. We're going to feel like someone who's living in dirty pajamas. So when you go to work, you might be a little more casual, but dress for work. And then when you sit down to read that book or to write that book, put your comfy slippers on, a softer t-shirt, rumple your hair a little bit so you're appropriate to the task. Suit up for what you're doing. It makes a difference. We're, We're funny people because we've learned to live within roles. Now, if that's all we do, that's that's not good. You know, because we need to go deeper and we need to reach that experience of the I am. But day to day, roles work for us. They help us know who we are trying to be in a given moment. As a psychologist, one of the techniques I was taught, and it would work wonderfully, is someone was struggling, not knowing how to be who they wanted to be, we could ask that person to imagine in front of them the person that they were wanting to be. And when they had a good visual image, we simply asked that person to step into that image, into that imaginary suit, that imaginary outfit that expresses who they are wanting to be. So, suit up every day. Wear the clothes that express who you want to be 
throughout the day. Who you want to be when that part of the day is over and a new part begins. Suit up. Put those pajamas away. At least by 10 o'clock. Okay, so now I was wondering, well, where else could I find advice from the heavens? And I realized I needed to go either further up far beyond where that space station is, to the highest of the high heavens, and see what advice is to be found. So, of course, I went to Jesus. Okay. And Jesus, in his life, in his teachings, would teach about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven and he taught a lot about that. That was so central to what he taught. And what he told us about that is whatever else you might be doing, whether you're suiting up or exercising or starting and stopping work, whether there is a virus and a shelter in place or whether we're wandering this earth, whatever we're doing to seek first the kingdom, and that works whether we're sheltering in place or living this brand new life that will emerge or even in our old lives before all of this began. When we seek the kingdom first, and of course he taught us that that kingdom is within us. So we seek first that consciousness, that consciousness where we deeply know the presence of God, where we deeply know our oneness with God, and we seek that first. And when we do that, then our calls to the um, internet company, our calls to the utility company, our calls to the repair people, you know those calls that can be, or to a government office, go completely differently. There's a different experience. If we seek first the kingdom of God and we are in that consciousness of God presence, when we're cooking, it's a different experience. When we're reading a book, it's a different experience. So, in addition to a routine, in addition to exercise, in addition to playing nice. In fact, not in addition to, at the very core, before we do any of those other things, we seek first the kingdom. Jesus also taught us that we will never enter the kingdom unless we become like little children. That's a provocative teaching. What is it about children that allows them to enter the kingdom more easily than, than we do as adults? And when I reflected on that, what came back is something we've talked about quite a bit. It's that willingness to be new. Remember we've talked about how that willingness to be new allows us to claim that inner peace, that willingness to be new allows us to grow through any circumstance we encounter. Children are always willing to be new. They're eager to be new. They want to grow and evolve and learn. So like little children, we become willing to be new. Like little children, we learn how to be present in the now moment. Children can do being in the now moment better than anybody except puppies. So, so we need to live in the present moment. We need to embrace the newness of both the present moment and the coming moment. Children who are growing up in healthy circumstances laugh easily. Um, 
they find it easy to, to be in a, an experience of joy. So if we are to seek first the kingdom, and if we are going to move through any circumstance in life, in good style, we must become like little children. And then there was one more piece of advice that is so central to our moving through this coronavirus experience. And it's that you need to love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus is in agreement with Jessica Mayer when she says, play nice, take care of one another. Because if we truly try to do this alone, we won't move through it, we will get buried under it. So even for those who live alone, find ways of re reaching out. Find ways of, in your heart, sending compassion and understanding or a prayer. But to love our neighbors as we watch what is happening on the TV, allowing our hearts to open in love and to send that love to the people who are there to send a prayer their way. It is so, so important, this playing nice, this loving our neighbors as ourselves. In The Course in Miracles, it talks about how we can enter the kingdom and what a great thing that is to let go of the illusions, to let go of the things that torment us that are not real, and to enter that kingdom. But the Course in Miracles says we will never, ever, ever enter the kingdom unless we do it all, unless all of us enter that kingdom. So to remember our oneness, and the things that we want for ourselves to carry us through this experience, to see that and want that for everyone around us, knowing that the slogans that the commercials and the media are giving, that we are together in this is absolutely a truth, a very deep spiritual truth. So as I was looking to see if there was any other advice that would be important to include, I thought that maybe it would be important to go to the very top or maybe the very depth of the kingdom or the heavens, the kingdom of heaven, and listen to the words of God. In the book of Exodus, Moses was leading his people through the desert. And it wasn't a week-long hike. They spent years moving through this desert. And it was a desert experience. A desert experience means things are different. They're not the same. The, the, the grocery stores aren't around the corner. You have sand and more sand and more sand. And sometimes you don't know where your next meal is coming from. But in the desert experience, God set manna, spiritual food, from the heavens. And there was always the surprise of there was enough. And how do we even know where this abundance is coming from? And the trust in that that was involved. And so Moses was tasked to, to love the Israelites, to lead them, to be their rock, their strength, their leader. He was reaching out to God's people, but he said to God, hey, you picked the wrong person, you know, because I'm not one of those leader types. I'm not one of the people that is cut out to make a huge difference to save these people. And God reminded Moses, he said, I am that I am, 
and you need to know Moses, and the people need to know that I am has sent you. So as you're facing this crisis and the changes in our society, and you realize that you have to find a way of playing nice with all the people who are moving through this with you, and you think, hey, you know, I'm not one of those people. I'm not cut out for making a difference in this world, in this pandemic world. You need to remember that I am is sending you. I am that I am is sending you. And the I am that lives within you the God of your being, the God that you are one with. For God is out in the heavens, absolutely, but God is so present within your being and your heart, and God is sending you. I am is sending you to so find some way, maybe a little way, maybe a tiny way every single day, but over 40 years, or 400 years, if we keep realizing that I am is sending us, there is a promised land. And there is a journey through the desert now that is filled with hope, that is filled with strength, that is filled with possibility even as we move through the sand and there's more sand and there's more sand. But when we are in that consciousness of the I am and knowing that the I am is sending us not only to take care of ourselves in amazing ways, but to make sure we bring others along, that we offer that love in the process. And then the infinite possibilities, the amazing things that can emerge, start showing up little by little and growing in strength. So advice from the heavens, a lot of wonderful ideas. And however you move through that, whichever pieces you claim, Remember that as you move through this circumstance, I am is sending you on a journey, on a journey of your own soul's unfoldment. Namaste. As we enter this time of meditation, I invite you to become still. I invite you to take your favorite meditation posture and let the music of Narayan and Janet enter your heart. Fill your heart as we now center within.
It's good to be the human race. Let's not let it go to waste. Thoughts of separateness erased. So as we move deeper into our time of meditation, I invite you for a few moments to simply notice the movement of your breath. Notice how your breath feels when you breathe in. And when you breathe out, Notice how each breath takes you deeper within. And allow your breath to take you deep within that sacred space, that sacred space within you, where you know the presence of God. where you experience that presence, that I, the I am that I am. That sacred space within you, where if you listen quietly enough, you can hear the still small voice, the voice of God. that sacred space where I am speaks. I am calls to you. And you know that I am, I am that I am, is sending you challenging you, inviting you to be all that you can be. 
to be all the love that can be. To be all the compassion that can be. To be all the hope that can be. To be all possibilities that can be. For a little while in the silence, listen for the voice of God. Listen for I am as I am is sending you. And know what you are called to do. Listen in the silence. I am that I am is sending me. To be the heart of God in this world. To be the heart of the great compassion that is God in this world. I am that I am is sending me to be the divine wisdom that expresses in this world. I am that I am is sending me to be the joy in this world. I am that I am is sending me to be the laughter in this world. In your heart, hold this affirmation. I am that I am is sending me. Holding this affirmation, allow yourself to gently and easily return your attention to this time and this place. Allow yourself to be fully present. Feel the ground beneath your feet. Take a nice deep breath, letting that breath make you fully present. And then join with me in saying thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. It is that time in our service, if you were physically present, where the ushers would come forward. But what I would like you to do at home this morning is to symbolically take your treasures of time and talent and hold them in your hand as we offer them up 
to the good of all. As we say together, God's love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am and have, all that I give and receive, I am grateful. And our center would be so grateful if you would go to unityvacaville.org and click on that orange donate button. When you do, if you would take the time to let us know that today you were watching the Sunday service and listening to Reverend Dahlia's brilliant talk. Thank you so much. Unity has five basic principles. This morning I'd like to talk about principle number four. Through affirmative prayer and meditation, I connect to God and bring out all the joy in my life. The affirmation that I have been using again and again during this time of crisis has brought me such joy and comfort. Together, the inexhaustible resource of spirit is equal to every demand. There is no reality in lack. Our abundance is here and now manifest. And so it is. Amen. Let's join together in the singing of our peace song. Let's join together in the prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Together, we are one holy family. We celebrate our oneness and honor our diversity. And as we end our service this morning, I would like to once again thank all the essential people that are here today making this possible. Narian and Janet, thank you so much for making our services come alive every Sunday with your wonderful music. You so bless us all. Thank you. Thank you to Mike Fincher on audio. Thanks to John Working on video. Thanks to Teresa Meadows, who is the lifeblood behind this whole service. Our beloved center manager. Couldn't do it without her. Thank you so much. And of course, our beloved Reverend Dahlia. And especially her brilliant talk today with her sage words of advice. We are so blessed as a community 
and a congregation. And we close with this affirmation. Together, we open to infinite wisdom and embrace divine guidance. And so it is. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday and a terrific week to come. Thanks for tuning in. See you next Sunday. Bye-bye.